Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. You can see the view is beautiful and I'm having a Jaguar with me right now. I kid you not, there is a Jag. You can see the Jaguar logo on the hood of this vehicle. Yep, that is the Jaguar logo. Anyways, let's not get distracted right now because we are here to review the MG Hector. The Hector is right in front. This is the key of the vehicle. It is kind of slim and right up front. Okay, let's first open the engine bay of this vehicle. So this is the petrol motor. The hood is actually very heavy. I can make my muscles here. 550, 5000, 1 million. Anyways, MG motor. Okay, MG turbo, it's written. You can see the covering is very nice. You know, they've done it very professionally. Nobody does it like this. Okay, it's very nicely done. In fact, I would say that, uh, you know, the way the whole engine bay has been done is actually looking very smart. Okay, no hydraulic struts. Scorpio gets it. Safari gets it. Insulation here. Let's close the hood right now. And at the front, you can see there's this bold grille, which MG likes to call as inspired by the F-35. Yeah, fighter plane. MG logo here, which is big and bold. Front parking camera. You get a lot of nice treatment. In fact, this is the towing hook of the vehicle. And you know what? The light is placed below, just like in the case of the updated Creta, the new Creta, as well as the venue, as well as the Harrier. So over here you get the LED DRL along with the indicator, which is a swiping one. It's a you know floating roof indicator. Meanwhile, these are the lights. Now I've turned on the low beam. This is the high beam. It also gets corning lights, fog lights, MG written here, front parking sensors, chrome treatment. Car looks absolutely nice actually, because you know it looks very nice. Look at this. I mean, it's really well done. However, there's a small problem. The car isn't wide. It is tall, but it isn't as wide as I would have expected it to be. That is one minor issue with this vehicle. But that aside, as you can see, the Hector is a long car. In fact, it is the longest car in the segment. Just look at it, okay? And it says Morris Garage there as well. Morris Garage is there. Hi, doggy. What's up? You like the car? He actually likes the car. He's looking at the rear wheel. Anyways, you can see the vehicle does look very nice indeed. And black and B pillar, black and C pillar, black and D pillar. Lot of black and treatment. You get this chrome treatment here as well. Request sensor on the front right door as well as on the front left door. But if you put your hand in, it's not going to unlock the vehicle. Well, that's a minor gripe anyways at the rear you get these beautiful floating indicators which swipe from inside to outside big mg badging right there you get a rear spoiler shark fin antenna roof rails massive sunroof as well and obviously there's the chrome treatment you know what they've smartly done here okay body color then to break the monotony you get plastic bumper reflector here rear parking sensors and then another extension on the lower half of the bumper again plastic okay here you get the exhaust over there you do not get the exhaust but you get the similar treatment for the exhaust i believe if the exhaust shifts from that side to this side for certain markets well the symmetry is maintained that's a nice touch definitely the car looks quite nice although the rear could have been better i find it too busy it's like too many things are happening over there from the side definitely the car looks nice now these squared wheel arches will certainly remind you of the jeep compass to a certain extent tire size 215 60 17s and because of the dual tone treatment the alloy wheels actually look nice but there's a lot of gap right there you can see the gap yeah that is massive and that is there for a reason which i'll tell you when i'm driving the car it says internet inside here on the front left it doesn't say that on the diesel over here it says it at the rear why have they moved it well there's a reason for that as well there's a reason for everything trust me in life there's a reason for everything meanwhile below here below the outside rear view mirror you can see there is a camera here because it gets a 360 degree parking camera at the rear here it says hybrid that's why they could not put internet inside right there that is there on the diesel opening the boot of the vehicle and here you can see there's the camera yes it gets automatic boot release as well boot is actually big it's a decent size but you know this actually eats into the boot carrying capacity it's big enough but the loading lip is a bit high however when you take it down yep there's space to keep stuff as well there's a proper compartment to keep stuff battery placement i believe is here this is not for the hybrid motor this is for the vehicle's battery i believe meanwhile to close the boot press this button and there it goes that is very 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 cool indeed okay that's again a first in segment feature i believe the upcoming mahindra xuv 500 will also incorporate the same meanwhile morris garage is written here as well let's open the rear door okay the doors actually feel quite heavy 
oh god this cow scared the shit out of me right now <laughs> anyways the doors actually feel quite heavy so build quality is pretty nice double stitching and the door pockets are obviously large enough now this is an accessory which happens to be the mg air freshener aqua breeze net weight 130 grams genuine accessories so a lot of accessories are going to be offered as well morris garage is written right there as well and you know what to increase the boot carrying capacity you can split this into 40 and 60 and it's flat as well so you can carry a lot more stuff yeah 60 40 split is always a nice thing meanwhile that's not the only thing here all right now the seat is upright it has a recline angle so you can recline it as much as you want you can recline it even further you can recline even further and this actually increases the comfort on offer yep The seat does recline a lot. You can see there's so much space on offer right inside. Let me tell you, there's good amount of knee room as well as leg room. But you know what? I can't push my feet right below the front seat because there is the battery placement here. That's the reason why this seat doesn't get electric adjust in the hybrid model because the battery is placed below the seat. But there's good amount of knee room and leg room as well, and headroom is also pretty good in this car. The seats are comfortable. All leather seats, lot of leather, 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 leather everywhere. There is leather in this car, so that gives it the premium touch. However, under the support isn't that great for a tall passenger like me i am 6 feet 2 inches by the way so there's two space here as well there's a usb charging socket here rear ac vents floor is flat three people can sit here however the seat is not that wide because the car itself is not that wide that's the reason it's best for two people you get a center armrest with twin cup holders you get three adjustable headrests here and overall comfort is really very nice inside this vehicle meanwhile i mean the windows are so light they give you the airy feeling there's a light placement here there's a hook there's a handle So a lot of convenience features inside the car. Again you get the same thing on the left side as well. So comfortable cabin, certainly the rear is a good place to sit in. Meanwhile, let's quickly get into the front. Okay, now the windows do not have one touch down. It's only available for the driver side. Okay. Getting inside is easy. All right. It gets a six way electric adjust for the driver seat. four way adjust for the co passenger seat only in the non hybrid models door pockets are large enough there are markings here as well these are the controls for the power windows and again everything feels so solid and well put together nice leather treatment it gets six airbags all right you get a dead pedal there too these mats also get the morris garages logo so morris garages everywhere just to tell you yes this is an mg meanwhile the storage space here too it's an open storage space this is to open the fuel lid this is to open the hood of the vehicle Lot of buttons here this is to open the boot this is for cruise control this is for headlight leveling and these are the controls to adjust the outside rear view mirrors this is to close the outside rear view mirror so let's get inside and there is a lot of things to like about this vehicle for starters the dashboard design does look very nice indeed all right it does look nice sort of a flat bottom finish here three spoke steering wheel feels really nice to hold as well this mirror doesn't get the auto dimming function unfortunately there's a sunglass holder here a lot of lights here as well and obviously it gets a sunroof it's a massive sunroof and you can operate the sunroof using these buttons actually this is for the sunroof blind these two buttons meanwhile this is to open the sunroof of the vehicle the sun visor gets a light along with a mirror too and there's space to keep your toll receipt same is the case here no space to keep your toll receipts but you get a mirror as well as a light dashboard design looks really very nice this large 10.4 inch touchscreen infotainment system will remind you of a volvo and it certainly seems to be inspired from there as well looks so freaking similar All right, this is the button for traction control. This is the button for hazard light. This is the button to start the engine of the vehicle. Right here, you get two USB ports along with an aux port. And trust me, this is a fast charging USB, so it works brilliantly well as well. Meanwhile, the glove box is actually decent sized, and you get this double stitching on the dash as well as on the door pads as well as on the seats. It looks superb. It absolutely looks superb. Below the front center armrest as well, there's space to keep stuff. Yeah, it's a decent size, and that's not all. There's also a socket inside. It's a 12 volt charger. socket meanwhile here you get twin cup holders and it gets ambient lighting as well and these lights can be changed with the flick of a button and you can also decide if you want the lights to continuously keep changing that also works brilliantly well on this car this is the button for auto stop start system this is for the 360 degree camera and this is for the parking sensors meanwhile it gets a physical handbrake however the DCT model gets a electric parking brake all right electric parking brake now 
as you can see the car definitely looks very nice there are a lot of buttons here this is for voice commands and this is basically for the media along with the phone controls over here this is for the cruise control and to operate that multi information display which is absolutely expensive so first i need to say okay because tire pressure monitoring warning is coming and then i can get into warning message fatigue driving it will tell me if i'm tired and it will flash a warning message there as well meanwhile you can see there's a lot of stuff phone audio navigation everything can be seen on that 7 inch multi information display meanwhile on the left you get an analog speedometer on the right you get an analog tachometer which has been reversed so basically you know i'll just show it to you yep it works the other way yeah it drives till almost 5000 rpm in the petrol 2500 rpm in the diesel tell till lights are placed all over the place over here you have the odometer over here you have got the distance to empty meter it's telling me driving time is 7 hours 25 minutes range is 370 kilometers this is the fuel meter this is the temperature meter and there's the car in between which will show you various other warnings as well so definitely it looks really very nice now these are the controls for the headlights these are the controls for the wipers the wipers work really well on this car as well and there's a lot of glass area which gives it the airy feeling inside the cabin so the good thing here is that this screen has a lot of expansive features all right so in order to control the air conditioning well this is how you control it yep now turn off ac climate control is off there you go hello mg i'm here open sunroof Yep. It has got such smart capabilities. I mean it can do a lot of things, all right. Hello MG, close sunroof. Yep, there it goes. Really very smart, isn't it? I mean, well, I think I should just press this once and open the full sun blind for you guys to see that brings in a lot of airy feeling like they have given a massive sunroof. Okay, need to press this once more. Now it will open completely. looks really nice brilliant isn't it meanwhile over here there's so many things why does it have it because it has got the connected car features and uh, where is the phone here is the phone so we just get into the phone sorry i don't know to operate a samsung so fluently 1 2 3 4 5 6 is the password all of you know the password all right <laughs> here we go so vehicle status it Sorry, the app got hung because it's Android. Anyways, okay, this is the hectare screen. It's showing the fuel range. It's showing the fuel tank capacity. You can use Find My Car. You can lock the car. You can unlock the car. You can open the sunroof. You can open the tailgate. You can see a lot of information here. So that's really very cool. And that's not all. There are some really cool features because this car comes fitted with an Airtel SIM card, which is 5G ready. All right, let's get into home. All right, you can see a lot of information here. Okay, phone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto connectivity, inbox settings, file, I call tire pressure. So this is the tire pressure monitoring system showing you the tire pressure, and that's not all the cool. Okay, I, I kind of find it a little difficult to go back to the rear screen. Coming out of the tire pressure monitoring system, there's a Ghana app as well. Before that, let me get into the settings of the vehicle, which means getting into settings here. Lot of settings. Okay, this is for the audio, this is for the volume, this is for the display. You can decide how you want the brightness, and if you want it day, night, or auto. Date and time can be set here. You can also decide. how much the tailgate you want to open there's six positions for the tailgate as well that's so cool whether you want the rear view mirrors to automatically close and you know if you want to put the wiper into maintenance mode there this is in maintenance mode that is so cool i mean there's so many amazing features inside this car this is actually telling you about the vehicle which happens to be the mg hector brand mg model year 2019 model blah 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 color blah 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 all information is here mood light okay mood light right now it's in constant mode let me put it into random mode okay in random mode let me select all the colors so there are eight colors there's a 360 degree parking camera it's of great use however there's a problem the resolution isn't that great obviously you can press this button to choose which side you want to see front or rear press this button and i can switch it front or rear okay this is the 360 degree camera view as well it's a good thing however resolution could have certainly been better meanwhile this is actually to turn on and off the screen this is the volume control this is for the rear defogger this is for the front defogger now let's quickly get back the touch screen isn't the most fluid around so you do have to end up pressing it a few times that's one problem you can decide you want the skin setting to be dynamic gray or you want it to be blue so i've changed it to gray right now it's become gray So plenty of features inside this car navigation works brilliantly well as well however it will not really update you about real traffic now because it has a sim card it doesn't have to rely on your phone for navigation or for anything at all so these services are available for 3 years all the sim features are available for 3 years along with the premium gana app which is also available for 3 years that's right for 3 years you get the premium gana app you know what listening to an audio in an mg hector is kind of boring because this car has a lot more funky stuff to offer so let's do that right now so here we go in to files all right right now we are into files and let's play a video 
As soon as I put the handbrake down, it says safe alarm. Please hold your parking brake to watch video for security reason, which is really very cool. It will not let you see videos while driving. But if I pull the handbrake up, that is so freaking smart. Really appreciate the smart touches inside this car. And you can see text, you can see pictures. It gets a climate control, air conditioning system as well. The automatic headlights, the automatic wipers, the heated rear view mirrors as well. So many features inside this car. The audio system is great. It's from Infinity. It gets four speakers, four tweeters, amplifiers, subwoofer, you name it. This car has almost everything that makes the MG Hector extremely loaded in terms of features. The seats are also so comfortable. Everything feels nice inside this vehicle in fact there are many segment first features as well but how is it to drive well let's get going right away turn off ac climate control is off traction control off left foot on the brake no 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 here we go wheel spin yep baby rest till 6000 rpm now this is the petrol hybrid which obviously produces more power this is the petrol hybrid which gets a 48 volt battery which does nothing at all in terms of performance because the power and torque output remain the same from this 1.5 liter turbocharged engine which happens to be 143 ps of power and 250 newton meters of torque for a claim mileage of 15.81 kilometers per liter which apparently is class leading as well so in terms of performance this car is without a doubt great but there is a catch because unless and until the turbo doesn't sing its song there's no progress at all there's a lot of turbo lag because the turbo doesn't spool up anytime before 2000 rpm so you know 2000 rpm gradual boost is there but it's really post 3000 rpm that it gets going really fast and hard and that's when you're going to really enjoy driving this car so you actually have 3000 rpm to play with because redline comes in at 6000 rpm from 3000 rpm to 6000 rpm is a real fun from the motor the top end is also really nice it screams to the top end it screams to the red line and the best thing is that you know the way the motor pulls in the top end it absolutely puts a smile on your face because it sounds really nice as well around the corners it is better than the diesel somehow the steering does offer slightly better feel and feedback but still it's not up to the mark because the steering is kind of on the lighter side not kind of it's pretty light which makes it great for the city but the drivability is so poor that this car doesn't excel in the city however that said the gearbox is good to use the clutch feels lighter than the diesel and it doesn't feel as understeery as the diesel because front end weight is lesser it weighs around 1600 kgs slightly lesser than the diesel you can see the ride is brilliant the suspension is on the softer side meanwhile there is some amount of body roll around the corners but the suspension does a great job of isolating almost everything given in its stride and yes there is some amount of vertical movement due to the soft suspension and high speeds but for the most part you will really appreciate the ride quality of the mg hector you can see there is some amount of lean there's some amount of uh, noise from the tires as well but there's tons and tons of grip this is a front wheel drive four wheel drive might come but there's nothing confirmed yet the vehicle has turned off onto the clutch it turns on and which is pretty good it's very silent battery saying 96 percent power wheel spin when you accelerate hard and fast and overall fuel economy should be just about in the double digits although yes it will guzzle fuel because you will want to push it into the mid range all the time because in the low end it doesn't have anything much to offer now what does this hybrid system actually do if it doesn't give boost well it is actually a mild hybrid system it does have e-boost which gives you slight amount of increase punch when you want to you know overtake but that really can't be felt it's a system more towards the cis than towards the camry but that said it is more advanced than the cis not only will you get regenerative braking that is when you brake it's going to you know charge the battery right now as soon as i applied the brake it went from 98 to 100 percent so that definitely works so you obviously get three things from this hybrid system the 48 volt battery one is e-boost the other is regenerative braking and there is the stop start system as well revs very cleanly revs fast as well quite a lot of fun the petrol is actually more fun than the diesel because there's a silence before the storm okay there's so much lag lower down unless and until you don't push it hard and fast it will just not reward you and that's something i actually like and appreciate because i believe there has to be the silence before the storm otherwise you know if the car is good from get go you know you won't enjoy it as much as much as you would enjoy when there is some amount of lag lower down you can see the brakes are superb okay it gets rear wheel discs pedal bite is also very superior 
and gives you good feel and feedback as well the gearbox is also very crisp it shifts but you know you get really aggressive with the gearbox and then you know you realize there's some amount of notchiness it resists and it will not give you a shift now obviously this is not an automatic but there is the option of a dct that dct only comes with the non-hybrid so this is the hybrid model there is the non-hybrid which is available both with a manual as well as a dct all the gearboxes in the hector are six speed only whether it's manual or automatic now what we have in front of us is uh, this guy's old cousin now between the petrol and the diesel hector which is the one to buy now obviously the diesel is more practical because it's more fuel efficient as well and the engine is very well proven too and it's more fuel efficient too however the petrol will be more accessible not the hybrid one but the regular petrol will be more accessible and i don't think there's going to be much of a performance difference between the hybrid and the non-hybrid models other than the fact that the hybrid is going to be slightly more fuel efficient and all those trickeries of the stop start system is just going to help you extract that little bit more kilometers per liter that said you know i would have loved it if it had better drivability because when you're driving in the city you realize okay i need more punch how can i get more punch oh no you cannot because low end is just sleeping the turbo is like okay wait let me sing my song i see you tomorrow but once it pushes into the mid range hard and fast kick in the pants wheel yes you got it right okay i don't know what term to use but it's something like you know when vtech has vtech kicked in your mg has i don't know something kicks in your and you feel the thrust from the motor which is quite exciting in fact i'm having such a joy driving this car around the twisties yes the steering could have done with a better feel and feedback it's light very good for the city easy to maneuver easy to park and especially with 360 degree camera on board definitely that helps as well you know there are so many features in this car i forgot to tell you that it also gets adjustment for the steering both for rake as well as reach so yes mg has thrown everything at it although a diesel automatic is something i really look forward to but that's not here and that's not coming anytime in the near future but you know it's a great thing that they have gone the hybrid route to show people that they're capable of bringing in hybrid vehicles and obviously they're also getting electric vehicles so there's a lot in mg's portfolio which is being awaited in the indian market look at the car's grip levels fab all right understeer near the limit definitely but other than that ride is brilliant it's a comfortable car and if mg decides to price it right then it is going to sell in good numbers too because it's going to offer a lot of value as well however i just cannot deny the fact if i want to make an overtake i have to get to the lowest gear possible in this case it was first so yes you know that hybrid boost is not there this is far from being a camry hybrid level of a technology right now but then again it's going to be cost effective that's what matters at this price range rest till 5000 rpm Yep, that's the talk steer on offer because we were at the right boost. So guys, this is my review of the MG Hector Hybrid, the petrol hybrid. Review of the diesel will come tomorrow. If you like this video, you know what you have to do. Give it a thumbs up. That's a like button and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye-bye.